How is Onco Anemia Diagnosed? In this video, we will further explain the diagnosis that we left behind on the clinical features video, by establishing a relationship with the molecular features learned previously. When a patient is suspected to have Onco Anemia, the first step is to run a chromosome breakage test. In this laboratory test, cells are tested for their hypersensitivity to chemical agents that cause interstrand crosslinks. If we remember, Anemia patients have difficulties when repairing interstrand crosslinks. In order to test this ability, interstrand crosslinks are induced by using chemical agents such as diapoxybutane or metamycin C. Therefore, a Fanconi cell will present a greater number of chromosomal breakings as a result of the lack of DNA repair. This test is generally done on blood cells. However, in some patients a phenomenon that made difficult diagnosis takes place. This phenomenon is called reverse mosaicism. In this reverse mosaicism, a hematopoietic cell undergoes a new mutation that corrects a previous Fanconi gene mutation. This corrected cell can grow in the bone marrow and give rise to healthy blood cells. The cell has recovered from the disease. Hence, we may be facing a Fanconi in a patient, but at the same time be unable to diagnose the disease because we are testing healthy cells. In order to overcome such difficulties, the test is done in a skin cell called fibroblast. Fibroblasts are used because it seems that they cannot undergo reverse mosaicism. This crosslink hypersensitivity test can also be done on fetal cells, obtained by hemiosynthesis or chorionic bill sampling. Therefore, prenatal diagnosis is possible in this disease. In order to be more certain, a complementary test can be done to check whether cells are accumulated in a cell transition called G2N. This is due to cells having checkpoints that prevent themselves to start division if anomalies are found. In Fanconi anemia, a checkpoint detects DNA damage that is not being repaired. Therefore, cells should be accumulated on G2M transition. However, while both tests let us know if a patient has Fanconi anemia, none of them is able to find out which gene is affected. How do we identify the disrupted gene? A retroviral complementation test is needed. In this test, cells are infected with a retrovirus that contains a DNA sequence of the Fanconi healthy gene. Therefore, if the mutation that caused Fanconi anemia disrupted the same gene present in the retrovirus, the DNA sequence of the retrovirus will complement the cell. The cell will recover and pass the test. If the cell doesn't recover, this test is tried once again with another retrovirus that contains a different Fanconi gene. This pattern is repeated until the disrupted gene is found. Ok, right now we know how to diagnose Fanconi anemia and even how to identify the disrupted gene. But what if we want to go further? It's not only necessary to determine the disrupted gene, but also to identify the mutation that disrupts the gene. To achieve that, the disrupted Fanconi gene is sequenced and compared to a DNA sequence of a healthy person. Knowing the affected gene is very useful, but we may leave aside the retroviral complementation test and keep analyzing genes by higher to lower frequency of mutation. In a near future, we will even be able to analyze all the Fanconi genes at once by using new sequencing technologies.